Broadcasting from Hollywood, it's the official On Air with Brandon J podcast. Here we go. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Brandon J. Welcome to On Air with Brandon J. I'm joined by a special guest today, pop recording artist Chris Jor. Chris, how are you today? Hey, Brandon. It's been a minute. It's it been has. What? The last time I, we did Here. an interview, was it was uh, like, what? During COVID, you were on a yacht. I was like, you're making music on a boat. Yeah. Your life is great. <laughs> Uh, what 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 has uh, what have you been up to in 2022? Let's start with 2021. Uh, first thing I did was I got on the boat. When was COVID? COVID started what 2020? Yeah, 2020. It's been about two years since we did the interview. Two and a half. You and I had the interview maybe in June of 20. Right. Jesus. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun and you're and you're workaholic like us, whether you're in the studio, whether you're doing interviews, so on and so forth. First of all, I missed you. It's been it's doing last time I even saw you, we hung out and I think we had lunch in Santa Monica in, in LA. That was a fun day. Yeah, that was. You were like joyriding in a in a convertible. I was like, oh my God, am I gonna die in the car? <laughs> we were doing a music video for the original version of Save Me, which we never ended up releasing. Right. Uh, instead, what we did was we released uh the holophonic um collaboration with uh so I collaborated or we collaborated together. With, I collaborated with Holophonic and uh, they really liked the original version of Save Me and then they, that's when we released the, uh, the dance track that just went you know, all over Spotify. Yeah, millions of streams. I was playing it on the radio in Charlotte, North Carolina on my mix show. That, that, that song had such a good sound to it. The melody, the tempo, everything was just right about Save Me. Yeah, they did a, they did a pretty good job on it. They took out the best parts, which were the parts that I worked on the most, uh, putting little string sections on it and percussions. And I don't know what, I had to take it all out because, you know, people in dance don't really care about the hard work. They just want to dance, so. Absolutely. So, so now, so let's fast forward. We're in 2022. You know, you had, you had great success with Save Me. Uh, you just released a new single, if I'm not mistaken. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So since we, since Save Me, um, a label picked me up called Pop Arabia. And it's thanks to them that Save Me did as well as it did. And then after that, you know, did as well as it did, Pop Arabia and I, got we we also did more work on uh the new ep and i worked with um two amazing songwriters really i mean incredible talents kyle and tyler these two have been working together since they can remember and so pop arabia put me in touch with them flew them out to my apartment and we uh, and we ended up working on uh, an entirely new EP, uh, and our first release was Mister. Very cool. So when you say you know you're working on an EP, for all of us that don't know, like we're clueless. Like, what's an EP? Is it five songs? Is it six? Is it seven? You know, what do you feel the audience tends to want to listen to now? Because everybody's not really about the album like they used to be in the old in the olden days. Um, I mean, I think I have, I, I love soul music. I've always loved soul music. I've always been a big fan of Aretha, Etta James, the big names. And by the way, now uh, Tevin Campbell is, is getting put back onto the radar, which I'm a huge fan of, by the way. Um, so I've always wanted to, I, I wanted to keep that soul, that, those, um, that feeling in it. But also I'm Lebanese. So I wanted to throw in some of my Lebanese heritage. I wanted to put in the, uh, um, you know, what, what, I, what I lived here in Miami, which is also the Latino or Latina music. 
um, I just wanted to mix everything all up together. And that's what we came up with. And speaking of, of being Lebanese and being from Lebanon, you know, can do you do you care if we talk a little bit about the current economic climate of what's taking place over there? I usually don't ever talk about politics um, or the economic crisis, as a matter of fact, because there's always a lot of things going on behind closed doors that we only see the tip of the iceberg. Right. Um, but the only thing that I can tell you is how my life got affected. That's what I can talk about. Back when I released Care About Us, it wasn't a political statement that I made. It was more of a social activist. Like, this is what's happening to us. You know, that you're, it's not just about the trash. It's about, it's about the political crisis. It's about uh, the economic crash. It's about the hyperinflation and how it affects me as a Lebanese person living in Beirut. And it made me want to leave because my country hasn't done anything for me as an artist. Wow. And so I had to go and find, I had to take care of myself. So I had to leave. I wasn't going to just do a nine to five job because I had bills to pay. I'll do that to support my music, which is what I'm about to tell you. I will get a nine to five job just to support my music, not so that I can stay in a country that has failed me. You know, it's almost like you're a family in a home. And when the family doesn't work and cohabitate together harmoniously, then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave. It just doesn't feel good to be here. So I got on the first, uh, I, I took the first opportunity that I could and I came to Florida, which is where my first opportunity was with the person who owns the boats that we last had an interview on. And he, offered me a beautiful life here. And That's awesome. I'm so happy for you and excited for you because, you know, I've met so many artists over the years. And the thing that stands out to me most when I listen to an artist or I see an artist perform is that unique vocal tone. And I remember, you know, I was talking to Gordon Pagoda and uh, me and Gordon have, have recently written some great, great music together. And we're looking to see, you know, what gets placed and so on and so forth. But I remember, you know, he was like, have you seen this artist in Chris? She's singing uh, Sia's uh, Chandelier. And I watched it on YouTube and I was like, oh, my God, you yeah. got to work with her. Like, we got to figure out a way. And the next thing you know, we're we're, you know, you're in the studio working with Gordon. And it's just crazy how things like that work out. But there's only so many people that have like these unique characteristics about their tone about their talent and it doesn't matter where you where you come from whether you're from the middle east whether you're from china whether you're from canada the u.s wherever you're from you either have talent or you don't well thank you if absolutely thank you. so <laughs> let's talk about this ep so when is this ep getting released we just released the first song mr mr we have five songs on it um so me, Kyle, Tyler, and I worked on five songs for this EP. It is set to be released in the beginning, in the first quarter of next year. We released the song, just the audio, on the 29th of September. And on the 10th of November, we released the music video. And it's doing fantastic. We're actually redirecting everybody as much as we can to go to the YouTube page because Instagram has this weird thing where you can't post your own music video because it gets deleted. Then you have to prove that it's yours and whatever. Anyway, just, I mean, we haven't really boosted anything. Just the trailer alone has 34, not the trailer, but it has 34,000. And this one, which is just a part of the music video, just the pre-chorus, has about 9,360, and we posted it just yesterday. We haven't even boosted but it that's yet. That's incredible. Congratulations on that. What do you Thank think you. Is, is, the, uh, is the winning formula for allowing a piece of content to potentially go viral on social media, whichever platform it might be? It might be Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. Let, let's, let, let, me, let me just stop right there. TikTok, right? TikTok is, is like the number one platform. Even Triller is contributing to billboard charting 
But what do you think, Chris, is that defining metric of what makes something go viral? It's something I learned from Quincy Jones back when I was working with him. It's not the boosting. It's not... Some people, some, some people have incredible, incredible songs. But something that I learned from Quincy and from his manager, Adam, uh, is that if you don't have something that's going to touch people, a great song uh, with, with, with a strong message, you know, because you can, you can have a great song, you know, but not everyone thinks the same thing, but it has to have a strong message or a strong beat or a really catchy hook or even uh, you know, like this, this trailer alone, if you see it, the shocking factor over here is the feet. People went mad for that. So it has to have a shocking factor and a lot of people need to be able to relate to it. And, you know, it's like, I, I did what I could to combine what it was that I learned with my experience in the music industry. And I mean, the, the, it's just, the results speak for themselves. The 15 second trailer for the coming soon exceeded 34,000 views and it hasn't even been a week. Yeah, that's amazing because like everything has moved towards a Instagram reel or a YouTube short or a TikTok video. I mean, TikTok has influenced these other platforms to kind of follow in the footsteps of what TikTok has been able to combine, being yeah. that we can take a piece of content and capture a viewer or the audience's attention in six seconds or, or 15 seconds or less. So it's just incredible. I mean, yeah, they've, they've made... Uh, They've expanded the time that you can upload, you know, your, your longer duration videos. But for the most part, everybody wants six or seven seconds and then we're moving on to the next video. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, you know what? This is my problem with the new generation. And I feel like I'm getting old just saying this. Everyone's impatient now. Oh, yeah. Please sit quick. Nobody can pick up a book anymore and read because it <laughs> takes time. Everybody wants audio books. Everybody wants everything done quick and fast and you lose interest. Gone are the days where we had to wait. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the only thing we're waiting for is of humanity and things of that nature. So, Chris, what advice do you have for our audience at home that has kind of, let, let's just say that, you're a musician out there, for example, and you've fallen into a rut and you kind of don't know which way to turn. What would you say to them? I have fallen into a rut and I'm not, I mean, I will speak out of personal experience. And if I had to go back and think about one thing that I wish I could have done, and I said this in my TED talk, it's that everybody knows what they need to do. They're just afraid to do it. Something's stopping them, whether it's fear of failure, whether it's impatience, whether it's money getting in the way there are people and this is something that you learn from some movies that you watch if you really want to you will find a way it doesn't matter what you do you can do shameful things but as long as you keep your eyes on the prize you will find a way to make it happen and stick to your have a have a what do you guys call it laser tunnel vision tunnel vision thank you i lost my focus i wish that back then when i was in lebanon I wish I invested more in myself. I was young, I was in my 20s and I just wanted to have a good time. Now the problem is that the money that I had saved up in Lebanon is now seized in the bank. All That's, the money that, that I saved is up, wild. I, I it, it's, it's hard to 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 oh. even comprehend that the fact that your money <laughs> sitting it in the bank and you can't even you don't have even access to it. Can you imagine, let's just say you have $50,000 saved up in a bank. You're only allowed to go collect your money once a week at $50 per week. And there are very specific times that you can go and stand in the bank. Sometimes some people would even stand in line for hours. When I say hours, I mean three, four hours, miss lunch. And then you get there and they go, oh, sorry, bank closed and they couldn't even get their money. Some people would sit and wait. And there were even jokes about some mothers bringing their bowls and, and uh, you know, just like sitting and, and cooking and prepping their food while they sit and they wait because the lines were ridiculous. 
the last couple of years, if anybody went to Lebanon carrying US dollars, you live like a king because then you take your money into the black market, exchange it for a hell of a lot of Lebanese pounds, but the locals are getting paid in Lebanese pounds. Don't make that much. So that, people that is wild. Liberty line. I, I saw, you know, I was watching, I, I, I can't remember what, what it was on, but I saw people that the media was reporting that users of the bank, you know, customers of the bank, I should say, customers of the bank are trying to get their money out. They're so frustrated. They don't have money for food or various things of that clothing, whatever it might be. And so they were robbing the banks. Yeah. And then the it's only thing that, that people are adapting to is cryptocurrency to actually put food on the table. I don't know that. I've never, this is actually the first time I hear of that. Yeah. That be, but that's because I've been here in right. Miami this whole time saying to myself, I don't need to, you know, the only thing that I keep in contact with in Lebanon is communications with my dad. Right. Mother lives between Switzerland and and Lebanon, so I don't really ask about much. Some of my friends, I'll check in with them, but I mean, who has time to catch up on the phone when really they're just worried about getting working very hard to pay their bills at the end of the month? Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I mean, I my heart goes out to to everybody just around the world being affected by various things because I think that COVID when everything shut down and there was the lockdowns and, and oh, all I over the, around the world. had nothing it, to do. It had COVID nothing to do with Nothing that. to do with the Lebanese crisis. It started way before. So wow. I, I can tell you a story, of, but I'm, it, it'll take forever. But I mean, like the, the main conversation here is, you know, how did you leave Lebanon? What happened over there? Let's transition and talk about your music. But I can tell you stories about what happens. And I can and I definitely tell you that I'm not the only person who had to leave. I had to leave my family behind. Wow. Some people don't understand the value of family, you know, because they're used to living on their own. Most Americans live, you know, they, that's why you guys have homeless people. In Lebanon, there are practically no homeless people because we never let go of each other. We're very, 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 we're very tight. And I know it sounds like a criticism and I do apologize to anyone hearing what I'm saying, but you will never see homeless people in Lebanon because we never let go. Never, never, never. You know, based on your statement, Chris, I'm offended, but it's okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. So, so new music just released, doing very well. Where can people follow you on social media and hear this new music? It is, the, uh, I'll show it to you. It's uh, Chris Official right there. I know. I think you can see it mirrored. Oh, we can see it. It's clear as day. Oh, it's <laughs> you not came mirrored. prepared, so we we could see it. Chris official. Yeah, so it's Chris official, and then they will. Th this will redirect you to my YouTube page. Just type in Chris X R I S S, and you'll see the. So you'll find Chris Vivo on YouTube, and then you'll see the. Uh, you'll see it posted. It did like five thousand in one day, which that's I guess that's awesome. I mean, listen. I Hard work pays off. Great music always trumps everything. So congrats on everything, Chris. Thank you for taking the time to kind of share your perspective on being from Lebanon. Thank you for sharing your new and latest updates of the new music you're releasing. Congratulations on a better better life and, and, uh, and making the transition to Miami, Florida. And I'm looking forward to hearing your new music. We're going to play it right here Yay. after the break. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, right here on On Air with Brandon Jam. Brandon, we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now. Thank you for tuning in to On Air with Brandon J. Follow on Instagram at I am Brandon J.